So let's talk about rifle setups. Uh, when you go to buy a rifle, what you're looking for is obviously something that's reliable. Uh, if this is a rifle you're going to be using for defense. So a rifle is the best option for home defense. You've got good capacity, you've got good stopping power. Uh, it's easy to shoot, so just about anybody that trains with it can pick it up and use it. And it is a, it's a very effective fighting weapon. So when you get a rifle, obviously you want something safe and reliable. This is a SIG Tread M400. Uh, we managed to pick this up for relatively cheap, uh, which was fortunate for us. Usually I buy my own rifles, but uh, we've got something special in mind for this. Uh, so the very bare bones rifle, and that's what this one is, the very bare essentials you need for a rifle are a sling. For any long gun you're going to be using, potentially for defense, you have to have a sling on it. The sling is the holster for your long gun. So you can't set your rifle down if you are in a legitimate life or death scenario. So if you have to pick up a kid, use your phone, do something else with your hands, you gotta have a sling. Next is a some sort of optic. And red dots are the optic of choice these days for rifles. Uh, this is a SIG Romeo 5. It's got the what's called a shake awake, which basically means you could turn it on and when it's stationary, the dot turns off. When you pick it up, it turns on and it is very sensitive. There is no, there's no chance that you're going to pick this up and it's not going to come on because you didn't shake it hard enough or something like that. It will come on at the slightest touch. Uh, Normally, I would go with a fixed stock, but with this one, you know, we didn't have much of a choice. It's actually a pretty nice rifle for the deal we got. Uh, the only thing that I would change on this rifle uh, is the charging handle. So, normally charging handles, uh, they're kind of hard to grab. So, this one's small, rounded. Uh, it's not the best. It's, you know, normally when you're pulling back the charging handle, you're pulling back from here. But this is this is very small, so I would change this almost immediately. Uh, other than that, the trigger is very crisp. I like the trigger. It has ambidextrous safety and ambidextrous mag release, which is a nice touch for the rifle. Uh, the only other thing is, so you've got a QD mount right here for uh, attaching sling, swivel, stuff like that. So the only reason you would use this is for a single point sling. And most folks are going away from the single point slings these days. They're just really, unless you're doing like military and police work, getting out in and out of vehicles and helicopters and stuff like that all day, Single point sling really isn't the best option. A two point sling is what everyone and most trainers are, are teaching folks and moving to. So single point or a two point sling, some sort of red dot optic, and your home defense defensive rifle is good to go. Okay, so let's talk about how I have my rifle set up. So some of the things I'm looking for in a rifle is lightweight. So I built this rifle uh, it's very, very light. It comes in just under, I think at about, just under six pounds. So unloaded, it's it's a pretty light rifle. And when you are, when you're going to a class and, you know, slinging a rifle for eight hours, you, you want something light. You'll say, oh, well, you can't lug around an extra pound or two. Well, trust me, when you're out there for eight hours with this thing slung over your shoulder, you're going to want something lighter, even if it's just a few ounces or a few, you know, a pound or two. Uh, so the other thing with my rifle is it's got backup iron sights. So you see these iron sights, they are fixed, so they are not pop-up. So for me, I just wanted them there. Uh, I don't have any problem with pop-up sights, but... Just for me, for this particular rifle, I just wanted them in place. I didn't want to have to mess around with trying to flip up and down sights. So they are co-witness with my red dot. So if the red dot doesn't work, I can look through the irons and it works just fine. Next is the charging handle. 
So this is a very robust charging handle. I've seen a lot of charging handles fail. This one is ambidextrous, it's bigger. So as I grab it, there's a lot more to grab onto. It's very smooth. Uh, I use a fixed stock on that. So the fixed stock for me, it, uh, well, for just about everybody, a fixed stock is, you know, this is a rifle length stock and it's gonna fit just about everybody. Adjusting that stock back and forth, you really don't have to unless you're doing something like getting in and out of vehicles all day, which most people aren't doing with a rifle. So a fixed stock is gonna work. The good thing about that is when you have to do, when you have to clear a malfunction uh, by doing what's called a mortar strike, so you grab the charging handle and you slam this down to pull the charging handle with a collapsible stock, you have to collapse the stock first. So you collapse the stock, then you clear the malfunction. With a fixed stock, you don't want to mess around with that. If you got to clear it, you clear it. Just throw it down on the ground, bam, done. Uh, this grip, it's okay. It's uh, light, obviously. It was 3D printed. It's a very light grip. It's uh, It feels kind of funny in the hand, but whatever, it's okay. Uh, the trigger is an ALG uh, CQB trigger, which is... Uh, very crisp. It's not light, but it is smooth, and that's what you want in a trigger. You don't want anything gritty or, or whatever. So this is how I have my rifle set up. Uh, I recently put on the ASR mount for my suppressor, so I can shoot the suppress if I want to. And then the other thing is an attachment for a light. This is a uh, Streamlight Super Tac X. Uh, it's super bright and it projects really far. We'll have some video here in just a little bit of uh, me shooting at night. But it's pretty basic. It goes here so that your, uh, your thumb or your, your light is about uh, at the 11 o'clock position. So it doesn't obscure the sights, but it gets as close to the sights as you possibly can get it. So now let's talk about my home defense weapon. This is my personal home defense weapon. This is a SBR or short barreled rifle in 300 blackout. It's got a lot of the same features as my normal rifle, but as you can see, I've got the flip up sights. Uh, these are just, you know, standard Magpul flip up sights. I do have the same charging handle, big charging handle, very robust. It's the same ALG trigger collapsible stock on this one because I wanted something that was shorter. Most of the time I'm just going to be running it in a very short compact uh, collapsed already so that I can you know move around the house with it if I need to. Red dot sights and I have a light laser combo. And it is suppressed. So I went with the 300 blackout because uh, it has full powder burn in this length of barrel. The barrel is 10 and a half inches and you get a full powder burn and suppressed. It's uh, with subsonic rounds. It's very, very quiet. Uh, I know there is some debate about shooting a home defense rifle suppressed. There is a psychological effect to a loud explosion, loud bang of a round going off and the fireball and things like that. There is a psychological effect to that. But for me, uh, I don't want to you know, lose my night vision or blow out my ears because I shot inside the house. Uh, I'll be issuing verbal commands if someone does break in. It's not like I'm just gonna sneak up on somebody and pop them. I will be issuing verbal commands so uh, there is no need for me to have a huge fireball and my neighbors will not hear it so that's another point obviously a sling you gotta have a sling on every long gun that you own uh, that is my home defense setup